Okay. Well, um, I want to welcome everyone to the Museum for Art in Wood. Um, and the Chava Bikum Fil Matraf Al Fan at Hadshab. Uh, and wish everyone a Ramadan Mubarak. Um, the holiday begins this evening. Um, and um, I welcome you to the third installment of the Seeing Through Space Talks. Um, the Seeing Through Space Talks are held within the framework of the Mashrubeya Project, uh, which is an exhibition um, hands-on projects and programming that open to the public here at the museum on March 3rd and will continue through the 23rd of July. So we hope to see you all here and um, also in the virtual space in that time. Um, the Seeing Through Space exhibition is a multidisciplinary presentation that interprets the societal and cultural concepts evoked by the Mashrabea. It features new commissioned works by six women identifying artists from across the Muslim world. And their works here in the main gallery of the museum speak through the many languages of the Mashrabiya, evoking the metaphors and stories that are found in its elemental forms. The seeing through space artists are Anila Kayam Aga, Nida Badwan, Susan Ifuna, Nadia Kabelinke, Majida Khattari, and Hoda Tawakol. The Mashrabiya project as a whole evokes the museum's origins as a nexus for wood turning and a space for communal practice. As such, it reaches across space and time to embody our vision to interpret, nurture, and champion creative engagement, honoring the museum's first makers while creating new dialogues between new audiences and across continents toward global engagement and understanding. The Mashrabeya provides a viewpoint from one space to another, and likewise, the Mashrabeya project links spaces and cultures framed by discussions of architecture, craft, and community. Today's talk, as I mentioned, is the third in a series featuring the artists in the exhibition. These talks are offered virtually to accommodate the locations of our speakers and are available online for asynchronous viewing. In October 2022, Hoda Tawakol gave the first talk, and then in November, we had Anila Khayamaga. Today's speaker, who is joining us from Dusseldorf, is Susan Hefuna. Susan was born in Germany and grew up in Egypt. In 1992, she completed a postgraduate degree in multimedia arts at the Institut für Neue Medien in Städtelschule Frankfurt. She lives and works in Cairo, in Dusseldorf, and New York. In her drawings, installations, performances, photographs, sculptures, and videos, she draws on her mixed heritage to ponder the intersection of location and identity. Sort of like what we're doing here today. For over 30 years, Susan has been fascinated by the Mashrabea and has brought their gridded geometries into her work. Initially inspired by her connecting gridded streets of New York City and modern urban architecture with Mashrabea matrices and their complex lattice work. She began using them as a way to speak through her work, often weaving text in English and in Arabic into her handmade wooden window scaled screened wall works. Susan continues to explore the power of the Mashrabea to discuss women's experiences, the invasiveness of the gaze, and cultural boundaries in her work. She has exhibited internationally, and her work is held by many public institutions, including the Guggenheim Museum, the Museum of Modern Art in New York, uh, LACMA, Los Angeles County Museum of Art, the Sharjah Art Museum and Foundation, the Art Institute of Chicago, the Victoria and Albert Museum in London, and Centre Pompidou, among others. And her um, solo exhibition just opened at the newly inaugurated Giza or Grand Egyptian Museum in Giza and Cairo. And we are very, very honored to welcome her here today to speak to us. Um, so Susan, I look forward to um, discussing your work with you. Hello, thank you very much for this invitation. I'm very happy to talk about my work and I'm also very happy my work is uh, in your great show. And as you mentioned, um, I'm working with uh, Mashrabia for a long time and I was always uh, very inspired by the Mashrabia. 
Um, it started um, with photography between 1999 and 2001, uh, because I was, as a child, uh, I remembered uh, the streets of Egypt. I always remembered the Mashrabiyas and uh, how beautiful the light was, what uh, came through the Mashrabiyas and how, uh, how the inner space and the outer space uh, was, um, or how, you could be in an inner space, quiet and meditate and the outer space, um, you were protected of the outer space, which is very loud and uh, yes. And so I started uh, this group of um, photograph um, with my pinhole camera and uh, used the pinhole camera on the street and used also the dirt and dust of the street to develop uh, the photographs. And I wanted to have this kind of old look that you don't see if it's from the past or from the present, only if the viewer would cook, look um, carefully, they would see that it's contemporary because they would see my uh, myself sitting there in dresses from the, not from the past, but uh, from now. And um, actually, I was inspired uh, to do this pictures. Uh, this is also like uh, pieces of mashrabiyas from the street. And I was inspired to do these photographs uh, because I discovered uh, Leonard and Landrock, uh, the photograph, uh, photographers from Switzerland and uh, Germany, which they were living between 18, 78 and 1948 and 1966. And they produced uh, still, you can, if you go to Cairo in um, downtown Cairo, there is still the bookstore from Leonard and Landrock. You can find these uh, photographs still there. And they were the, the ones who um, photographed a lot uh, like Egypt and Tunis, uh, the pyramids and so on. And they developed the like also they made these oriental photos which are very uh, famous worldwide and what was interesting to me uh, that i found out that um, they had a studio or studios in cairo and they staged these photos which for the viewers look like uh, authentic but they hired women to stand there and then they um, produced the images they wanted to have and later i found out uh, and you can see, like, uh, maybe the next picture also. Uh, this is in the Nile Delta, and uh, because I, my family comes from the Nile Delta, so I was very interested how they show the pictures of the Delta, the woman in the Delta. And maybe the next picture also, and um, the next one. Here you can see very clearly how it's staged, how this woman is standing there and also now, like she doesn't even has a right dress, it's just um, fabric. And later I found out when I researched because um, Landrock went back to Germany to Lake uh, Constance uh, uh, where he lived his last years. And when I researched uh, about the photographs, I found out from a, uh, at the university there that um, the photographs were the Mashrabia, uh, maybe we can go back to the photo with Mashrabia in the old black and white photo of Leonard and Landrock, yes, for example, or before with the woman. That actually, I was interested why are the Mashrabias in these photographs? And then I was told that it also happened by accident uh, that one of the one time a photographer took like a piece of Mashrabia because it was around and they put it, uh, used it as a backdrop. And later it was just. Um, repeated that people use this mashrabia as a backdrop uh, for these uh, kind of pictures. So what we see as authentic images are a lot of this is staged and that was very interesting for me and it was the inspiration for my black and white photographs, which I did with a pinhole camera. Okay, and then we can go on. Uh, to and for example here you see the woman looks like a Madonna like like a Christian like like Madonna and her child like a painting. Um, and after I'm uh, so I also made another photograph woman behind Nashrabia 1997 where I used also digital photography 
and put like two layers uh, above each other. And this is a key photo and key work for me from 1997. I exhibited it in Cairo and it was just, it was a very interesting moment for me because uh, I was educated at German art academies. And at this time I was studying in the eighties. Um, the people, uh, my teachers only could see like, I was educated European and uh, uh, American art. And I had always this other layer in my work and a lot about the structures of Mashabia. And I was used that the people only see it as abstract work. And uh, I showed this uh, in a show in Cairo, in Zamalik. And I was so uh, uh, totally, I didn't believe it. Somebody came to me and he said, oh, what a nice work with, about Mashabia. And at this moment, it was a key moment for me that I understood that in my work, there's always different layers and it depends where I show my work. It depends on the viewer, how, what they see. And um, so the layers which were uh, invisible before they were visible at this moment. From then on, I use this tool in my work that I have different layers. It's also in my drawings, it's in my installations and so on, we will see it later. But this is, and this work is now at LACMA Museum in the collection in America. So I'm very proud that this work, work also found a very nice uh, home. Yes. Um, and then the next step, the first Mashrabia I made actually in Wood was 2004. Uh, seven contemporary artists were invited uh, at the Louvre in Paris. Uh, to do something in connection to a work in the museum. And it was, I think, the first uh, show with contemporary art in, at the Louvre. So I walked for several days through the Louvre and I, I discovered this work, which was a piece of architecture from Egypt, around two meter by 160. And I also went to the storage of the Louvre and there were so many Mashrabia pieces from the architecture of Egypt, of Cairo. I decided to remove this uh, piece from, uh, from the wall in, at the Louvre and I was living uh, in Cairo. And so I went and looked for the first time for craft people to, to produce a wooden piece, the same size like the other piece. And what it has uh, written in it was Woman Cairo 2004. And I wanted this piece to be in this museum and that people, if they wouldn't look carefully, they wouldn't see that it's a contemporary art piece. They would think maybe it's like an old piece from the old times. And only the viewer who looks carefully and was reading 2004, they could imagine it's, it must be contemporary. And it also, uh, it was um, installed. So if you go, if you were far away, you could read it. If you were very close, you couldn't, uh, it, you couldn't read it anymore and painted by, with ink. And this is the first uh, wood in wor uh, uh, work in wood. And from then on, I produced every year a woman Cairo piece for each year. And also even uh, now for this exhibition, it is a woman Cairo 2022. Actually for this exhibition, it was the first time I made round shapes, uh, Mashrabia shapes, yes. So maybe we can, yeah. So at the moment at the British Museum is a show where some of my Mashrabia are included like this one and also drawings. And uh, it's until end of this year in, at the museum because the museum were collecting my works since 2001. Um, like they have also other Mashrabias in their collections. So it was very, it's very nice to, if somebody is in London uh, this year, it's until October exhibited. And yeah, so now you see the Mashrabias. Um, every year, one woman Cairo and also other uh, writings in, in the Mashrabia. They are all like around two by two meters. And um, I also sometimes use other sentences like uh, patience is beautiful. It's like a, uh, like a very, a common saying in Egypt, or I say, or some word is um, 
in another version of Bia, it says silence forever, or uh, like sentences where I also think about what does it mean. Mm -hmm. um, and the Bashrabiya is also for me like, like a meditation screen. And what is interesting, the Bashrabiya is like this, which are, have also Arabic writing. If I exhibit them in the Western world, they, they only see it as an abstract work because they don't see even there is a writing in it. And if I show it in an, like in Dubai or Egypt, it becomes a totally different meaning because uh, people are reading also the Arabic writing. So this is like um, what I said before in my work is always like different layers, but the works also function as a total abstract work. At the same time, it depends on the viewer what they also can see as another layer in my work. And I like the Mashrabiya also because uh, it's for me, why I put the writing in it, it's for me like this, uh, mathematic tools which are stick together and it's like a and the writing is woven into this uh, screen okay we can go on um susan yeah. I, I just thought i'd add a note in yeah 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 that there is a very long tradition in um, of adding text mm -hmm. and um, including aphorisms or even very, very short um, uh, praise to, you know, sort of Islamic words of praise mm -hmm. um, in, in the Mashrabiya wood turning um, mm -hmm. patterns. So I just, for those of um, the of us listeners who, who mm -hmm. you know, those of us who maybe haven't seen this, Traditionally, um, there is precedent here. So what Susan's done is take that tradition and um, and, and put herself into it, literally. Mm -hmm. And also to put it, to make it contemporary. So I also sometimes I use like signs, like you see now this sign, which could also be from a text message. So I use this very old technique with the wood and wood turning at the same time the, the letters could look like computer letters in a in a in a text message or like also signs from a text message so this has like this cont contemporary uh, part also yeah. this is like this silence forever and this is one piece which is also part of the collection at the British Museum. It was the only piece I was able to cast in um, bronze. It was first produced in Egypt. It's around two uh, 160 by 140, then transported to Germany and cast it in one go because you have to cast that the bronze goes through all these small lines. And it was quite technically totally difficult to do. And that's why it's the only work I could do in this at this size uh, in, in bronze. Uh, also, these are bronze pieces. It says Anna. Um, this also and it's each time I first produced in wood because I want also it's it's uh, casted one to one like also you have the feeling of the wood if you go close and see it. Incredible. Yeah, it becomes also another, uh, from the material, it looks different, yes. Okay, and then this is also an important work where I use uh, casting and I use like this different, um, my heritage, like it's German, Egyptian. And so I have Anna as ANA, which you can read from both sides, why I like Anna myself in Arabic, because you, it's very smooth and you read it from both sides. It has no, you know, it works from both sides. At the other, ich, it's very, for me, like German, it's totally another pronouncing. It's not so smooth, not so, it has something, another feeling. And then in the Arabic uh, writing, so it ha has, it's a triptych. Uh, so it's also like these different layers, which are in my work or like, it's not only one, it has like three different, um, uh, aspects at the same time. Uh, yes, and so I wanted to show where I started when I was 2004 looking for crafts people. 
I went because I was living there. I had to convince the people first. I went there with a big drawing, a one-to-one. -one, and then first I had to discuss because it was, they, they didn't make big shapes anymore, like, large shape, like for architecture, they made like sw small pieces for furniture. And when I came there first time, I had to discuss a lot and drink tea and explain why I want to do some strange thing like two by two meter, which says woman Cairo. Uh, and so I, then I said, I'm a housewife. I just want to do it for my, I want something for my decoration for my house. And so the first piece was made. And then after, of course, we worked together now for since 2004, now it's clear that I'm an artist and I always do these strange sentences and uh, but they love it and they love also how difficult things are and for example when I I want a new, a new shape and I want a round shape and such things it's also very uh, uh, very exciting to work on this and I think it's very important because it's a great craft you can see here it's done without marking they just go there and make this piece without marking uh, the shape and it's all the same. And I love these shapes, we can go through. Um, and as I said, I like these tools which are stick together without glue, without nailing. Uh, it's like a mathematical system for me. And I'm very inspired also by the workshop. And that's how, if a piece is ready to see it, and uh, I paint it by, by ink, water and ink, because usually they, it's made with a totally different uh, color for the furniture. But for me, it's important because I also work with ink in my drawings, so there's this connection. Mm -hmm. I just I just want to yes. point out something that the mushrobia is doing its job in this this image. Mm -hmm. I'm just now noticing you behind. Is that you behind the mushrobia there? Painting? Yeah, yeah, I'm painting. I, I do something. There. Yeah, I, I, I paint. Yeah, that's very nice. Actually, yeah. yes. Yeah, I'm I just noticed it. it. Yep. <laughs> so it's doing its job. So. And it looks nice with the color of the of the car behind. Mm -hmm. You can see how this layer of realities. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Poignantly, the, the gentleman, of course, is standing. Yes, it has to be held because it's he's holding it. That it's not, uh, you know, it's not fixed. <laughs> yeah. So then I did also an, a three-dimensional uh, installation, two thousand eight, with the Mashrabia for Art Dubai. It was a, like a big, big project, and it had to fit all together, like because there are many pieces of Mashrabia which then had to. To be put together in Dubai. It was a for a performance where then I also used um, fabrics and I worked with uh, the famous tent makers in Egypt. Uh, and I used actually, I was working with, I started to work with these appliques, but in my own, with my own patterns and uh, also with contemporary uh, patterns and also related to my drawings and uh, at this time I also made uh, um, costumes because they were performing at Art Dubai and it was not announced that there is a performance so people really do, didn't know if these are ordinary people walking around or what it is it was and for these um, costumes I was mixing tradition of carnival in south of Germany the same place at Lake Constance where also from Leonard and Landrock he went back when he for his last years it's at the border to Switzerland and this is for example a character which is one costume but at the one one side it's a it has another character then from the other side and this is rooted in this uh, carnival where you have like a happy face on one side another face like a very sad face so i mean i was inspired by this and you can see this piece here what was over the head and i also you made a 
bags, but these bags are carrying uh, messages like beauty, like taste and so on. And they had also sound in the, in the bags. So the, bag, the bags are not only bags for carrying uh, goods. It's also like if people would walk around with many bags, they can form a sentence. So this was at the, at, as a performance. So the bag becomes like also like a piece of dress. It's more than a normal bag or yes. So I, I was also, and these costumes I made for Vienna uh, for a project with my gallerist in 2010. I don't know who knows the Vienna Opera Ball. And this has a, like a writing Enter Omri from Om Kalsum. It's like a, a singer from Egypt, uh, one of her songs. Um, and we went into this opera ball, but we were kicked out because this was not the dress code. Um, so because I don't know who knows this opera ball is uh, still like queens and kings were dressing in the past. So they still dress like this. And we went to this ball. Um, but it's also like it's a performance. It was like a kind of performance. And then you see that I in the textiles. Um, I use the same material and the, work with tent makers and why I was inspired by this technique. Because um, I was always impressed, like now at Ramadan, uh, you know, you have these tents on the street or you have it for weddings or funerals. And in the past, it was all made by hand, stitched and appliques. And nowadays it's more printed but I'm working with the tent make, it's all made by hand. And I used here, it's like graffiti a little bit. I, here I always, I also use the same tool that it has like some pieces of sentence from Om Kalsum uh, songs and also other things, or other writings. If you show this um, in a Western context, people see it as a picture. If I exhibit the works, um, in Dubai, Egypt, uh, people are, tr it triggers immediately like a song, like, like some more than only this, uh, what you see as a picture. Um, and they, these are like two, uh, 140 by 160 from size. And I, I use also like um, the dots and lines, which you will see in all my works in the drawings. Um, and it also has something to do with the mashrabiyas where things are always connected, like tools are connected. And so the next words are 2014. I was invited uh, to Sharjah uh, Art Foundation and Sheikh Ahur El Kasimi. She uh, curated this show and it's, it's a, former um, hospital and it was 45 rooms and in the middle you see the courtyard it was a big show and in each of the rooms everywhere was work exhibited and there's also mashrabiya screens in the building so it was a beautiful space to show and i wanted to show also that you see the afas the palwood uh, structures i'm this is also to i always I, I work a lot with uh, things from the street like afas like the uh, palwood uh, mashabias and the uh, fabrics what we saw before so these are all um, crafts which you see usually also on the streets of egypt um, i wanted to say something back please to the afas um, these are also like, like big drawings for me. And I work with the structure thing since uh, 1994. I, I used the first, um, uh, I, I formed the first pieces. And these are all made by hand also and stick together without glue and without nails. And what was beautiful here, what I didn't plan that, uh, at some point, uh, birds were coming and was, were singing in this sculpture for during the whole show. And it became like a, like a um, installation, like a, like a sound installation. But this was not, I didn't plan it, but it became very beautiful. And the shadow is very interesting, which is a relationship 
to my drawings. And now we can see the other works. Um, and the drawings here are inspired by the ceiling, what you see above. And it has also something to do with Mashabia. It's about how the light goes through the wood. And I made these drawings on the left side uh, in this context. And on the right side, you see the Mashabias from the building. And it was quite beautiful how everything came together in this building. Uh, and the idea of the exhibition was that it's like a, the building, the whole 45 rooms like are like a human being where you have like corners and memories and different aspects of the whole uh, being. It was quite a beautiful uh, location to have an exhibition. Mm -hmm. It's also ink, yeah. And this is one of my photographs, which are also about my Shabiyas, uh, black and white photos. And here you can, left side, you see a Mashrabiya, what I did on the right side from the building and in the middle is the shadow. So it's quite beautiful. And it changed all day, you know, it, it depended when you walked through how the shadow mm -hmm. uh, was, was changing. That is a true collaboration with our Yes, it was really um, amazing. <laughs> yeah, incredible. Yeah. It was also for the audience, they could uh, understand the work even better in this location when they saw, also then they saw the drawings, they saw outside the afas, the shadows. It made the, pe uh, when the people walked through it, it also the walking through the whole space um, was yeah. an experience, yeah. They can really, they can really understand the embodiment mm -hmm. um, of the Marshavea. That's incredible. And also the windows, windows, you had windows, uh, yeah. Actually, it was like the inspiration, what inspired me to do my work, it was exhibited in this context of the inspiration, so it came together, wow. yeah. Wow. Yeah. And here you see it's from above and also here it changed all day, it depended where, mm. how the shadow, where, where the sun was and what day, what time of the day. And from above, uh, the, the Afas also looked like drawings, like, like, yeah. It depended if you were downstairs or looking from above, like a, a bird uh, view. Mm -hmm. Now a little bit to my drawings to understand my, because I work in different medias, like the drawing, uh, installation, uh, performance, and so on. And this body of drawings was actually for Manchester for an exhibition, and it was like notations for dancers. Uh, and all the drawings are like thinking about the notation for the dancers. And these are two layers of tracing paper. And it's an example for my drawings. It's made by ink. And I'm, I, I, I do the ink, I do the first drawing, and then the second drawing is the second layer. And then I do the second uh, drawing, which is interacting with the drawing below. And important is uh, when I use the ink, I have to do it in one go. So it's very, it has to be very concentrated. And you can see the relationship, what I said before, that everything has different layers in my work. And what is important, each drawing exists for itself, but there's always a second drawing which interacts with the drawing below. You can see it here more clearly. And this kind of drawings I started 1991 was the first time I used the tra tracing paper and the different layers. And also you see the dots and lines that everything is connected. And then they will, they lead us, these drawings lead us to 
an exhibition 2017 in at the Guggenheim Abu Dhabi. They acquired one of my works about dance, which I made in, La, in um, New York at the drawing center. And then they had an exhibition about performance uh, and my work was exhibited from the collection. And in this context, I made a workshop with students uh, in Abu Dhabi for two weeks. Uh, these are not dance students, uh, but we developed like that they could understand my way of the drawings and movement. And I created uh, the costumes. I was drawing on the costumes, my drawings. And then they performed within the exhibition for the opening, um, also near my, near my, my works. And we, we, we rehearsed outside on the street. And it was about connection between people, like if people are dots and the space between the people are the lines and how they, they move together. And it was actually very interesting because, as I said, they were not dance students, but uh, very interesting what they, how they performed. I think there are some more pictures. And it was also interesting that they could experience my work. Uh, so we, I was drawing on the floor uh, and then they performed. And so they experienced the work through their bodies. They didn't only look at my work, they also experienced, it, experienced and they gave it also to the audience. So the audience could also, it was between the work was what, what was exhibited and the audience. And now uh, what you mentioned before, I just came back some days ago from Cairo because um, I was invited to make the first contemporary exhibition at the Grand Egyptian Museum. Uh, it's a bit similar like it was at the Louvre 2004 where they made like the first uh, with seven artists, the first exhibition at a uh, contemporary exhibition at a museum of ancient art and so the museum is not yet open, but they start now with contemporary art and my work is the first uh, exhibition. This is um, the installation. I made 28 costumes, again with tent makers, all made by hand. And in this case, it's inspired by the ancient Egypt, by nature. Uh, it says traces of Egypt, the sound of air, air, water, earth, uh, and the sun. And uh, it should remind us, uh, and it's a dialogue because this is like an original um, uh, work uh, from, from the past, what you see here. So it's like a direct dialogue from today to the past and also to the audience which are coming and it's, it brings also the street of Egypt from today into the museum. Uh, it's quite beautiful and um, it's about nature. It's about that we should listen to nature. And this is something what uh, the old Egyptians, uh, they were very close to nature. And uh, it's important also today that we are, uh, that's, what the work is about. So it's inspired by this uh, ancient Egypt, but it's, it's very contemporary at the same time. So that's uh, very important. Yeah, so that's uh, so far. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fantastic, Susan. Thank you Thank so you. much. Um, I, I loved your um, description of, of this exhibition in, at the GEM. Um, show and especially how uh, your note about how it enlivens the space um, and brings the street of Cairo mm -hmm. into the museum. This is um, something that I think about a lot is changing the perception of museums and also the experience of being in museum spaces mm -hmm. um, and using the architecture, uh, incredible architecture by the mm -hmm. way, of um, this new newest museum in a city full of museums. Yes, um, and what is, uh, I forgot, I made a children book also, which has my, the outline of, of my costumes. And they will make uh, workshops now with children to go 
into the show and then to uh, a kid's uh, coloring book. So they can color, uh, they, they can do their own costumes and, and inspired by, by, the, by the work and by the museum and yeah. Beautiful. And, and also the sense of, I think you'd mentioned to me that there are, there are commercial um, things that are purchasable in the gift shop. Yes. For example, are, also bags. I, I, uh, yes. Yeah. I, I also produce bags and also this kids book and other small things, which are, so it goes back to the people also. Yes. Yeah. So that there's also that crossing the line between mm -hmm. something that is, um, you can you can purchase and take home with you and then something that belongs quote unquote yes. in the museum world and you take it out to the street it goes you know it spreads uh, through cairo or wherever yeah yeah i'm so i'm so excited to see it i hope i get to see it uh, until when does it does it uh, june end of june okay start just uh, opened yes okay well congratulations Mom. thank you um, so I have a number of questions for, for Susan, um, but I also want to encourage um, everyone here to um, throw your questions out as well. Um, but I'm going to kick it off by talking um, or asking you about a couple of things um, that came up during your conversation. Um, first, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about your process. Um, you mentioned and you showed us some examples of your drawing and your multi-layered drawings, mm -hmm. which I think is important to emphasize that that you're building on perception of the drawn image as as uh, and building space into it as well with the transparencies and then um, the marks made on on two images that are superimposed over each other. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the photography that's a that's a principle that extends into the photography works. Um, could you talk a little bit about your drawing process? And, and I understand that it's more meditative mm -hmm. than, than one might assume. And yeah, so when I, with the other works, when I go to crafts, uh, I'm interacting with people, of course, because, and if I do the drawings, I'm kind of like in a room where, where the mashabias are around me and I'm in a very uh, quiet space. Uh, which is like meditate, medita uh, you know, quiet, and the the loud world is outside. So I need this quiet space to do the drawings. But to prepare for the drawings, I walk through very loud cities. For example, I did a, a New York. I did a, a lot of drawings about New York. So I'm walking through New York for many days without doing, uh, without actually drawing, but observing the city. And then I go back. And then I start to draw out of like, without an image in my mind. So I have to be very empty in my mind. And then it, um, the, what I observed in my body, I'm drawing about this uh, in structures. So, and the same I did one time, I went to Istanbul first time. I walked through Istanbul for some days and then I went to a apartment. I just was drawing for one week like uh, and it had it had like this kind of feeling of the city and later if i look at the drawings i can uh, remember things what i saw before but, but while i'm drawing i'm totally in, into in the drawing in the process mm. that's that's really fascinating that you have to immerse yourself and then give yourself the shock of being in a completely different environment mm -hmm. in order to kind of digest and then bring out the, the yeah. of the city. So it's somehow of the, about the energy, but because I'm, I'm observing the energy of a very loud and hectic city, but when I'm doing the drawings, it's, a, it's similar as if I sit in a room and there's Masha Bias, I'm, I look outside, but inside is a shadow and light and a concentration. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, um, in the handworking is in a, is has always been a, an important part of your work, whether it's this um, calligraphic drawings or um, your more sculptural work, and the um, the insistence that that the craft be done by people who are mm -hmm. professional and um, 
skilled in the craft. Can you talk a little bit about that as it, as it connects between your drawing and also the more materials focused works? What you see in my, my drawings are about structures, but they have like, you can feel my hand because they are not uh, grids. Uh, so, and this is important actually in all my work. Uh, that's why I also like to work with craft, which are handmade because they are never perfect. Mm -hmm. And so this is by my, this is because I could also say, I want to do it like with a computer or like um, 3D, 3D printing of my Shrabia pieces. Um, but I want to have this handmade uh, aspect because even each Mashabia piece is uh, nearly the same, but it's not 100% perfect. Mm -hmm. But this, and this is the same in my drawings that my drawings always have like these lines and dots are not straight lines. And this is um, something which is all over my work. And that's why I like to work with handcraft. And also I like in Egypt, I work to I like to work in Egypt um, because you have this feeling of, and it's the difference between printing, for example, on the, on the fabrics, which is nowadays uh, normally is all printed, um, but the handmade has this other, it has the hand, it has the human being in, in the work because mm. it comes from our body and we use our hand and you can feel the trace of the human, so, yeah. Um, now that takes me to wood specifically. Um, and and I, you mentioned in respect to the, um, the bronze cast pieces, mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. it's really important for you to still see the um, character of the material. Yeah itself even though it's it's being produced in a different medium can you talk a little bit about about the material of wood itself and what it brings to your work the wood because it's a living living uh, material and that's why i love the afas the palm wood pieces i'm i work so long with the pieces but they are so beautiful because also they are never the same <laughs> and how you put them together the, yeah the shapes yeah, I cannot say much more, but, and, <laughs> and wood is living, you know, it's also living, it's, it's moving, uh, like tracing paper also, my paper is, uh, it depends where it's exhibited, if it's in a wet uh, um, environment, the paper is also um, living, it's living, it's moving, and the same with wood, uh, it's, it's not, yeah. Yeah, well, I think there are there are some similarities between and certainly paper is a byproduct of wood, but mm. also um, through your discussion, I was reminded of the similarities between embroidery mm. and um, and specifically mashrobea, but also woodworking in many ways, um, and and textiles and um, things like and the ways that these um, processes connect to each other visually. And the, yeah, and the, the, the palm wood pieces, for example, they, they make, it's made when, they, when, it's, when the wood is wet, you know, and then the wet wood is stick together and then they, it's drying. So, and then it's uh, like this, um, what I showed in Sharsha, I showed it somewhere else and children were climbing on it. It's very, it's very fragile, but at the same time, it's very, people can, uh, children can even climb up. Uh, so it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's uh, how strong, strong this material also is, uh, very simple. Right. Yeah. So and, I love this, yeah. And also beckons for touch and interaction. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you mentioned um, a number of times um, uh, your dual identity. Um, being mm -hmm. rooted in, as it were, in um, Egypt as well as in Germany. And uh, I was hoping that you could talk a little bit more um, about that experience and how it impacts your art making. It's uh, also key uh, because I was uh, born into a family, Egyptian and German family. So I have two different um, roots, uh, which is I find enriching, uh, but at, as a child, it's not easy because you don't understand. Um, same things means different things in different contexts, 
but and then that's why this key moment came when I showed my work uh, in Egypt and I was uh, surprised how the lay I had always these layers in my work and actually I became an artist because I was creating my own language beyond beyond what was yeah. uh, in the outside world so it's still the same when I do my drawings and uh, even if I'm writing these sentences in or weaving into the mashrabia it's somehow it's like the own um, own language I, I feel like the mashrabia specifically is a cue for a lot of people of um, North African or Middle Eastern heritage that they don't think a lot about when when they are in those lands, but then when they're away from them, mm -hmm. it becomes a very potent visual symbol for um, for another place or another place that one might call home. Mm -hmm. uh, are you are you cued by other um, references as well as the mashrabia? Uh, what do you mean? Also, uh, uh, either I don't know. Um, architecture, music, or art that, that also compels you to think about uh, dual identity? There's a lot also music and, uh, but actually it comes, um, in my case, it comes from life experience. Mm -hmm. So how I develop my work is more from my own life experience and not so much by other art, uh, what I saw. So it was really, it came, by nature, that this was something what is um, part of my communication in my work. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to show, um, I have up, it might be a little awkward, but I wanted to show an image from the installation um, that we have. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, we didn't see it yet. What What is right. uh, the round shape? Um, so yeah. here um, you can see um, Susan's work here, Woman Cairo 22, um, and then two other installations that are in the exhibition. So you, see, you can see how they speak to each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> great, looks great. And actually these are now the first time <coughs> round shape uh, mashrabias. And also if you see the shadow in the on the floor, it looks like a big mashrabia. You know, you see the dots. Yeah. How they are connected. It's also another, like a shape of mashrabias. Right. And I saw that you would engage the floor in the um, mm -hmm. the work from 2017. Was it the the, the performance mm -hmm. and the garments? Is that there was yes. also interaction and dance that that was choreographed on the floor itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's interesting that you would pick up on that. Um, yeah, the, the round forms of the mashrabia are so untraditional. Um, I wonder what the response was from the um, arabesque studio when you asked them that, to do. That it's very difficult to do, very difficult technically. Mm -hmm. But, but they possible. Were, <laughs> possible. They were, but yes. they were excited by the challenge? Yes, yes, it's always, yeah, of course. <laughs> That's that's so fantastic. They must look forward to your um, yes. <laughs> proposals because it always tests their ability. Yeah, but it, it's exciting. Yes. Yeah. Um, and specific to dyeing the material, because I I think all of your mashrabia they are either black or white. Mm -hmm. um, is there a reason that you would never leave the the material as as you know, mood in its natural form? Uh, yes, because it's like, like my, for me, it's like my drawings and like, like the ink drawings. Yeah. So it's like, uh, yeah. Wonderful. Um, I want to be sure that um, people- And you can also see the, it's not painted perfect. You know, the painting is like, also like you can feel a, a structure, how it's painted. It's not like, solid painting uh, so the structure is also important mm -hmm. the ink how the ink is on the on the on the wood right and also considering your drawn works there is continuity here i mean there's mm -hmm. definitely connections between the works on paper and um and the works in wood mm -hmm. 
And, and I think the dyeing process and the ink, the addition of the ink allows you to do that. And of course, that's something that you do by hand. Yeah, yeah. So for this, with respect to this particular work, it was created in Cairo and then shipped back to you. And I have to paint it, yes. That's mm -hmm. a process uh, which is important, yes. So these works also travel just, mm -hmm. like, just like someone who is um, connected to two different geographical regions also has to travel back and forth. Yes. <laughs> the works are embodied. That's an interesting aspect. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, I think we had one question um, just more generally about, about being an artist in today's world. Um, do you have advice for young artists who are emerging? Uh, I'm already an old artist, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but I'm nowadays it's different. I think uh, for young artists, I think uh, because I also work uh, with students, it's very important that uh, you find your own voice or you find what is in yourself. That's why I also work about Anna myself. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually the most uh, difficult, but also the most simple, but to find what is really inside yourself and authentic in yourself and to express uh, this. And often young artists try to to see what other artists do and how they become famous, but it's not their own path you have to go. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's quite important and you can trust yourself and it's like the, uh, to listen to yourself. And this, uh, it's not easy, but that's, uh, this way will lead you to, to your work. And it's, uh, yeah, that's an advice I can give. And uh, I think the, yeah, very important. <laughs> Hmm. Thank you for that. That is so valuable. Um, I really appreciate that. And I know that viewers um, with us today and also um, in the future who will be re watching this um, recorded, they will be um, really, I think they will get a lot of value out of that. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, being a part of this exhibition. I can't think of an artist who has dedicated more thought <laughs> <laughs> or energy or process um, to this amazing form. Um, Thank you. And I'm so thrilled to have been able to work with you. Um, and I'm sure that we will have many, many opportunities in the future, at least. I'm, I'm so happy that you have this Mashrabia project and you brought together so many great artists and also the crafts uh, uh, people and, and also uh, like a focus on this, uh, you know, um, it's very important uh, that this uh, craft is uh, continuing and, yeah. Agreed, absolutely. Yeah, Agreed. yeah. And, and yes, very much I hope that, that uh, enlightenment and awareness will keep it going in the future. Um, I see Ahmed is here. Hi, Ahmed. Uh <laughs> Hi. Hi. I was about to say that the carpenter called me um, the day before to see ah. the uh, uh, Masrabeya hanging in the museum. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. oh I, I will. I will share with you the um, the images. Yes, the photos. Um, yeah, he, he asked me for it, so. Of course. I'd be course. happy to see yeah. it. Yeah. Yes, we must. We must extend a huge thanks to Mustafa. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. and his Arabic uh, workshop. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. He'd be happy. Yeah, all good. Yeah. No, we good. want him to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, I, I should mention, now that we're at the end here, that um, we used the Mashrabea, the workshop here, mm -hmm. in the museum space um, on Saturday. And um, of course, Katie and I forgot to take photos of it being used. But um, we have Mustafa's Mazat tools here for wood turners to um, explore and play wow. with. So I have to send him photos of, of this in practice and in action yes. also. Uh, it was an amazing, amazing gift to us that, that, he, um, that he sent those over. Great. <laughs> Well, um, thank you so much, Susan, for, for being with us. I know it's evening. Yeah. 
and um, I really appreciate your time and um, and look forward to discussions in the future. Yes. Um, the, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the um, series continues uh, with uh, three more artists, Nida Badwan. Um, who else do we have? Uh, Nadia Kabilinke, who will be in June. And um, who am I? Uh, Majida Katali will be, will be also uh, later, probably in May. So we look forward to sharing their words with everyone. Wonderful. Thank you. Have a good bye. Evening. You too. Bye. 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 Bye.